What up YouTube? So about two or three weeks ago, I uploaded a photo to Instagram and to Reddit of this right here. I ended up getting like 50 different comments on Reddit asking me, how did you post process this? What were your steps for editing this photo? And so what I wanna cover today is exactly how I edited that photo and how you can get a little bit of a similar look in your photos. I've never actually done one of these videos before. So what I'm gonna do is record my screen and also record myself and I'm gonna try to recreate exactly what I did for the photo a couple weeks ago, and I'm gonna talk through the whole process, explain what's going through my head, and exactly how I accomplished the look that I got in my photo. Let's get into it. All right, so the first thing that we obviously have to do is we need to take the photo on our camera, import it into Lightroom, and get it ready for post-processing. One of the biggest things when it comes to post-processing that you need to do is take your photos in raw format. If your camera has the ability to take photos in raw format, absolutely do so. It allows for so much more flexibility in post. Now that we have a raw photo in Lightroom, we can jump right into the edit. The very first thing that I like to do when I get into an edit is crop it and crop it exactly how I want it to be. And so I like taking photos in a vertical format, but I don't necessarily like how tall they are when you're shooting on a sensor that has a two by three aspect ratio. So what I usually do is I crop it down to a four by five, which makes it a little bit shorter, but also gives me the ability to then post it on Instagram in the perfect format. So I'm gonna crop it and leave it probably just about here. After I do that, the first thing that I'm gonna do is warm up the photo a little bit. So I know that I want this photo to be a little bit warmer. And so I'm just gonna bring it exactly to 7,000 in terms of warmness. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop the highlights. So as you can see, I'm retaining a lot of the detail behind the buildings in the background by doing so. I'm also gonna pull up the shadows a little bit, just pulling in a little bit of the detail in the foreground. And I'm also gonna drop the whites probably just by like 15 points. And then I'm gonna pull up the blacks a little bit as well. So as you can see already, if I hit the before button, we've made a pretty significant difference in the photo. It's looking a little bit flatter, a little bit warmer, but we're just getting started. The next thing that I wanna do, and arguably the most important thing, is messing with the tone curve. So the tone curve allows for you to change, number one, the contrast in your photo, but also change the color of all the different tones in the photo. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just lift the blacks in the RGB tone curve real quick. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me this little faded look in the foreground, which, Kind of looks weird when it's the only adjustment that you make, but I can promise you that we're gonna make a heck of a lot of more adjustments to sort of cancel that out. So that looks pretty good for now. I'm gonna start out with that, and then I'm gonna jump into the red color channel. So if you don't see your tone curve like this, what you might have to do is click on this little button down here. If you click on that, it changes between, I think the point curve and I'm not sure exactly what this tone curve is called, but I like using this one a lot more. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce a little bit of an S curve into the red color channel. So what that's gonna do is allow for me to introduce just a little bit of contrast with the red. So as you can see, I'm pulling a little bit of the reds out of the shadows and introducing a little bit of reds or pinks into the highlights, which is ultimately my goal. I want it to look like it's very warm in the background and a little bit cooler in the foreground with some blue tones, in the foreground and then some orange and sunset type vibes in the background. So real quick, let me just dial this in to where I think I want it to be. That looks pretty good for the red color channel. I know it looks weird right now. If you're not familiar with the tone curve, you'll see in a couple minutes exactly what I'm doing. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into the green color channel and I'm gonna do something very, very similar in the green color channel. I'm going to introduce a little bit, or I'm gonna take away a little bit of greens from the blacks and from the shadows and I'm gonna just introduce a tiny bit into the highlights. And as you can see so far, I'm kind of compensating for those changes that I made in the red color channel. And then finally, I'm gonna jump into the blue color channel and I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm not gonna make any adjustments to the highlights. 
I'm gonna leave the highlights alone because what I wanna do is make sure that there's more green and more red in the highlights versus blue. I wanna take some of the blue out of the highlights so that I can make it more of a sunset rather than just a midday blue sky. What I am gonna do, however, is pull some of the blues out of the foreground, which as you can see is making it start to look a little bit more normal versus what it looked like a minute ago. So if I just dial this in really quick, you can see that it's starting to get a little bit more of the vibe that I was going for on Instagram. It's not perfect yet. It's not exactly where I wanted, but we're gonna keep working on it and see how it comes out. If I hit the before and after on this, you can see that I introduced a lot of contrast into the photo. There is a lot of green right now in the highlights, so I'm gonna fix that. But as you can see, there's already a big difference being made. Let me fix this really quick, just flatten that out. And then I'm gonna jump into the green color channel. I'm gonna take away a little bit of the green from the highlights, because that looked a little bit weird a second ago. I'm also gonna take away a little bit from the shadows. This looks pretty good to me right now where it's at. So we're gonna move on to the next step. The next step is the calibration tab all the way at the bottom. So if we scroll all the way down, we see the calibration tab. Essentially what this does is it changes the appearance of the reds, the greens, or the blues throughout your entire photo. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the hue of the reds and I'm gonna pull them up more towards the orange side rather than the dark red side. What you can see that it's doing is it's making these cabs in the foreground look a little bit more realistic, making them look a little bit more yellow like they probably would in real life. And I'm also gonna take the saturation and I'm gonna boost that up pretty significantly to 40. So as you can see, if I pull this away already, it's making those cabs in the foreground just pop a little bit more than they were before. So taking it away and then bringing it back. It's making them pop a little bit more. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to the green hue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull that all the way up again to probably like plus 40. And what this is doing is it's making all the green pixels in the image lean more towards the dark green side rather than the bright yellow side. So if I pull in the opposite direction, you can see that it kind of makes the cabs look a little bit gross, but if I pull it in this direction, it's giving them that more like dark, moody appearance. I'm also gonna boost the saturation just a tiny bit. Whether or not this actually has an effect is up for debate, but I'm gonna do it nonetheless. I'm also going to pull the blues down a tiny bit, which as you can see, it's making a big change to the cabs in the foreground, but we're gonna resolve that and we're gonna change that in a minute. So I'm gonna do minus 20 on the blues, and I'm also just gonna bring the saturation of those down a tiny bit to resolve kind of that ultra popping color of the cabs right now. So as you can see right now, we're kind of bringing a little bit of more color into the image. If I take this away real quick, you can see that there's a pretty significant difference in terms of the appearance of the before and after. However, you can see that the cabs in the foreground are looking pretty unrealistic right now. There's no cabs that are that dark of orange. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back up to the HSL sliders and I'm gonna kind of resolve some of these issues right now. As you can already tell, there's way too much red in these cabs right now. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull that down a little bit. Not all the way to 100, but I'm just gonna pull it down to probably like 100. And then I'm gonna go into the orange tab and instead of pulling it to the left, more towards the reds, I'm gonna pull it to the right, more towards just the yellows. So as you can see, I'm already making adjustments to fix the appearance of those cabs. I'm also gonna take the saturation, I'm gonna drop it just a tiny bit, let's say by six points, and I'm gonna take the luminance and brighten it up a little bit. You can see that this makes a big difference to the appearance, so we're gonna do plus six points. And so now, if I just do a before and after of the HSL adjustments that I just made, you can see it's making a big difference targeting the yellow cabs in the foreground. I'm also gonna dive into the yellow sliders because I do recognize that these cabs still look unrealistic and they're kind of taking the attention away from the photo in the background or the subject in the background, I mean. I am going to take it and drop this by 27 points. I'm gonna take the yellows and drop them by like nine points in the hue. And then in terms of luminance, I'm gonna boost that up. And as you can see, this doesn't make nearly as significant of an adjustment as the oranges did. I'll show you that again, it makes a very big difference. But 
it does make a very slight difference. And as you can see, the yellows are starting to kind of counteract themselves. You can see that making those adjustments fixed some of the issues that we had before, and it's kind of balancing out the appearance of the yellows in the image. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide down to the blue, and all we're gonna do here is just drop the luminance by 50 points. You can see if I boost this, it boosts the colors and some of the cars and everything like that, but if I drop it down, it kind of takes the attention away from all the cars. So my goal at this point with the image, once I had gotten to this point during the edit, was I was looking at it and I realized that it was a perfect leading line between all of the cabs all the way up to Freedom Tower in the back. So I wanted to kind of take the attention away from anything else in the photo. I wanted to make sure that the focus was purely on these cabs in the foreground and bringing you and kind of leading you throughout the photo all the way to Freedom Tower in the background. So the next step, what we're gonna do is add a little bit of a vignette. This doesn't really make a big difference to the photo, I just really like how it looks. But the final step that I'm gonna show you, I think might be something that not a lot of people know about. So just real quick, let's go down to the vignette. I'm gonna just, usually what I do is I drop it by like minus 15 or 20, and that gives us just a nice vignette that allows for us to focus on the image or the subject that is in the center of the photo, which in this case is Freedom Tower. The final step in my editing process, I don't do this on every photo. It's actually pretty rare for me to do this because oftentimes it comes out looking unrealistic, but what I do is I come into the gradient filter, I negate any changes that it makes automatically, and then I apply it just to the highlights in a photo. So I'm gonna drop it in like that, and what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna boost the temperature by 100, I'm gonna boost the tint by 100, and then I usually actually boost the dehaze as well. So I'm just gonna do, for testing purposes, I'm gonna go up plus 50. And so you're probably looking at this and thinking that looks terrible, and it absolutely does look terrible. But what we're actually gonna do is we are going to use the luminance mask feature in order to just mask out the highlights and avoid the buildings in the background altogether. So how we do that is we come down here to where it says range mask. We're gonna click on this, we're gonna click into luminance, and as you can see, it gives us this range here. So if we drag it this way, you can see that it's pretty much negating everything, but if we do this, it's just targeting the buildings themselves. If we give it the entire range, it's targeting everything. But if we pull from this left side up, it starts targeting only the brightest parts of the image. And so if we bring it all the way up to 95 out of 100, you can see that just making those slight adjustments, plus 100 to the temperature, plus 100 to the tint, and plus 50 to dehaze, it makes it look as if we have a very realistic looking sunset in the background. So if I click on the before and after here, you can see that it literally went from looking like there's no sunset whatsoever to looking as if there's a legitimate realistic sunset going on in the background. So click done on that, look at this image, and we pretty much just accomplished what the goal was today. So following this editing method, you can take a photo that looks like this, all the way to something that looks like this. It's a massive change to the photo itself, and honestly, if you're able to follow through my steps, you can probably recreate this editing process fairly easily. All I did is I followed seven simple steps and added a little bit of time, patience, and creativity in there. I edited this photo the first time for about three or four hours in order to get the exact look that I was going for. The secret sauce, if you will, to this photo is that technique with the graduated filters. Being able to go into the graduated filter and use the luminance mask in order to segment out the sky itself and then adding some temperature and some tint into there in order to make it look like the sun is setting. The sun actually was setting in this image, but it was just setting way to my west, so I couldn't really see it, and it didn't really show up in the photo without all of this editing. I hope this video helped you understand exactly how I accomplished this look in my photos. Let me know in the comment section below if you want me to make more videos like this. If this helped you out and you end up using some of these techniques in your images, please tag me on Instagram at Jason A. Weber. I would love to follow you guys and see exactly what you guys are doing with these techniques. If you like the video and you're not subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up as well. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, peace.